Welcome to Spare Part Control Process Descriptions and thank you for your interest. We hope you'll take time after this short presentation to explore the other Triad Unlimited presentations on YouTube, follow us on LinkedIn, and visit our website to see all our service and training offerings. Spare Part Control is defined as a process for part procurement, transaction tracking, inventory management assessment, and administering vendor-managed spare parts. The four processes for spare part control address how we get spare parts, how we manage spare part movement through the spare part management system, how we administer spare parts management, and finally, how to determine which spare parts are best managed by vendors. Here are the benefits of spare part control. Spare part control defines a method to obtain spare parts necessary to support the asset management program. Aligning procurement with risk-based asset management processes ensures correct parts are supplied in a way that supports the stocking strategies and the quality requirements for the part. It provides a record of inventory movement and transaction updates that ensures inventory records align with actual inventory. We want actual inventory to match stock records. Every part transaction must be recorded and affected fields updated in real time. It gives us a process for assessing spare part inventory management to ensure the processes remain aligned. Spare part management is a process that has to be sustained through documentation. And vendor management of spare parts ensures that all spares are properly managed in alignment with asset management best practices. Some parts are better managed by vendors and suppliers. We need to evaluate our prioritized spare parts to ensure the best availability consistent with our business needs. Our first process is spare part procurement. The idea in procurement of spare parts is to Make sure you source the correct parts, that you source from approved vendors if the part is critical in any way, and never suffer the consequences of failure due to a procurement issue. You need to recognize the risk of not procuring in accordance with asset management fundamentals. Focus isn't on the immediate price point, but on the total cost of ownership and how that is impacted by quality and availability of parts. Lean storage frees working capital that would normally be tied up in inventory. All procurement contracts should be reviewed periodically for approved vendor qualification and compliance. Procurement should be leveraged across the business, and we should partnership with key suppliers to protect our supply chain. Now let's talk about our second process, spare part transactions. A spare part makes a few stops on its journey between being purchased and being installed in an operating asset. Each point in the journey needs to be recognized as a transaction and documented. For instance, we may have a purchase request process, so we have to have rules for creating the purchase request, reviewing the purchase request, and approving it. Likewise, we have rules around procurement, which we've just covered. We have rules for receipt inspection, and we make sure that during receipt inspection, we have the correct part from the correct manufacturer made of the right material, that the order is complete, that the documentation is correct, and that the part is labeled and able to be stored correctly. When we issue the part, we have to record what business unit it went to, what work order was it assigned to, how many were issued. And if those parts aren't used and they're returned, we need to subtract that value from the business unit and the work order and restore the quantity back into the storeroom. When we dispose of the part, we need to make sure we do it correctly in accordance with all regulations and environmental considerations, for instance. Our third process is spare part monitoring. Spare part monitoring is basically about continuous improvement of the spare parts management system and how it's administered. There are certain elements of monitoring that should be supported by process and documented, such as cycle count. Cycle counting involves counting a small amount of inventory in the warehouse each day, with the intent of counting the entire inventory over a period of time. Any errors found during these small incremental counts should result in adjustment to the inventory accounting records. Turnover analysis. Inventory turnover is a measure of the number of times inventory is sold or used in a time period such as a year. It's calculated to see if a business has excessive inventory in comparison to sales or issue. Obsolescence monitoring. Obsolescence is the transition from availability of products by the original manufacturer or supplier to unavailability. Spare part retirement. Ensuring that periodic orders are stopped part is removed from the CMMS and inventory removed from the storeroom when a part is retired. Our fourth process is vendor managed spare parts. Vendor managed spare parts or vendor managed inventory, VMI, 
is when suppliers manage their customers' inventory through physical counts or using data from their customers. Once inventory levels reach the reorder points, vendors replenish their customer stock for them. The primary goal of this is to cut down on costs and be more efficient. But how does this happen? Vendors can often manage inventory more effectively than the customer. This is because the focus is on inventory goals. Vendors work to reduce obsolete inventory and stockouts. There are several benefits, such as non-reactive inventory control. Because they're controlling the stock, vendors aren't responding to stockouts and other emergencies communicated by the customer. VMI puts supply chain expertise in place so inventory is precisely controlled. It also strengthens customer-vendor relationships because the quality of service is improved by being non-reactive. It reduces inventory costs by eliminating waste and non-value-adding factors and other costs. Accurate planning cuts the cost of storing excess inventory and reduces obsolete stock. More importantly, vendors are able to eliminate stock shortages and the high delivery cost to ship expedited orders. While vendor-managed spare parts are identified during stocking strategy decision-making, technology and logistics improvements buffer us against risk that used to be associated with not having stock in-house. Depending on site-specific factors, such as location, the evaluation of how to use suppliers to store inventory is really a refinement of the decisions made during spare part prioritization. To summarize, the spare part control function requires processes to procure spare parts, to track movements of spare parts from procurement to retirement, to monitor the spare part program, and use vendor management when appropriate. This concludes the spare part control process descriptions presentation. Thank you for participating.